Hey everyone. Right now I'm traveling through Maine and I want to show you a lot of damage. I haven't been in this area in a while, so I just want to quickly show you this road is real messed up. A lot of the roads here are closed. We've had so much rain the past month, it's awesome, but it's washing out a lot of roads and today I'm actually on my way into the deep wilderness of Maine. I haven't been there in like three months, but I expect to find tons and tons of damage. I got a bunch of rolls of marking tape. Who knows what we'll come across. I'm also going to maybe in the next few days make a vlog at night around dusk. So I want to show you guys some moose. I'm sure we'll come across a few. Look at this. The road to the left is completely closed. I don't know what town this is, but it says Franklin Road. In front of me, it's kind of cool, all the damage. So there's nothing saying I can't go down that road that says closed, you know? You can still drive down it up until whatever. They can't stop that because they have no idea what house you might be trying to get to. But take a look to the left. It's, all the pavement is just washed away and they did these temporary fixes for now. Look right here, drainage ditch just took out the road on both sides. Wow, down there against that farmer's fence, you can see all the debris stuck in it. Right here is all taken out. Right here, whole hill had to be built back up. I'm gonna turn around at the next intersection or so. Cause that's where I first discovered the damage and why is this guy going so slow? turning. I always feel people should put the blinker on before they... What the heck? Well, there's more damage coming up in a moment. I always make sure to put my blinker on before I start slowing down. Alright, right here's a good amount of damage. Look at this guardrail's all twisted. It looks like they just ripped it out of the way. Because it was obviously so you don't drive down inside there. The river still looks a bit high. Yesterday, and today is July 2nd. Yesterday was the only dry day in the past month. Raining almost every single day. That road's also closed. See all the cones? A lot of these roads appear to be not really that passable anymore. There was a little bit more damage up here. Somewhere, I believe. Maybe not. We're getting back into town. I think I'm gonna turn around again. Then we'll go back in the other direction. Yeah, there is no more damage. Let's quickly just turn around. All right. One more car. All right. I love driving in the rain. I have not had to wash my truck one time this month. Every time I go off-road, I hit a rainstorm on the way home. It cleans everything off. Haven't had that issue with mud building up because if you're driving through puddles off-road combined with dust, sticks, sometimes you bring home inches, which equivalates to hundreds of pounds of mud. When it hardens in certain places, you can't just spray it off with the garden hose. You gotta get the pressure washer out really bad at certain times. Is this guy taking pictures of damage or something? No, he's getting his mail, it looks like.
So I'm going to keep the camera going for a little bit as we continue down this road and who knows what we might be able to find. Seems like the damage is just going to keep going. Or maybe it's just this one road wasn't built properly or maybe all the pipes were plugged. That's all it takes. Improperly engineered. Or not doing maintenance. Yeah, here's one of the biggest washouts. Gotta be a little careful because this mud can go ahead and grab you and pull you in there. It looks pretty soft. Look at that big drop. I can't believe they didn't put more cones around that. See all the erosion here in the field. More erosion right here. I wonder if this guy's actually turning. Um, I put my blinker on because the truck makes beeping sounds if I touch the lines, even if I'm not turning. The blinker disables it. I could disable the whole system, but I don't because I want to know if I'm touching the line. I feel like that system really helps. It really helped me quickly learn my size, so I keep it on. I never touch the yellow line, but sometimes you might hear it beep when I touch the white line. Here's a good amount of damage. Look at that. Rain's picking up. This rain's just deteriorating it more. Brand new culvert under that driveway. Other one got taken out. Not a good thing to see the main DOT is using plastic pipes, especially in a cold climate. Frost heave is just gonna crush it. That fill they put around that one I just saw, that's not drainable. It's gonna hold water, expand right into the pipe. At least with a metal pipe, it usually expands away and causes minimal damage. So this is where we left off. That's where we just turned around. Is that, uh, is that a ton of damage I'm seeing right in front of me? I see a lot of dirt up this road. Take a look up there to the right. Yep. Oh my gosh, we gotta drive up here. Look at this damage. This is called Souls Hill Road. S-O-U-L-E-S -E Hill Road. Look at this damage here. Wow. A ton of it. Look at all this deterioration. Big holes everywhere. But this is what caught my eye. That pipe is messed up. Look at this big hole. Oh, wow. Look at that. Not a single cone or anything around that. I'm a little scared going this close to it. This is kind of scary. Look at this. I don't know where... Yeah, we can't even go forward. There's like nothing blocking this road off. Are you kidding me? Look up there. Road is completely just gone. And they don't have a single thing marking it. Really? I want to carefully back out of this. Wow. Really, man? You ran out of cones that easily? You gotta be kidding me. You just leave this wide open without a single thing. I'm kinda scared of what I'm next to right now. I don't like this. Yeah. And I'm turning into this because I'm done backing up. This guy's yard is destroyed by it. It looks like it's probably the town's fault for not maintaining their ditches. Ah, that's a bad one. Whole road is just gone and they didn't mark it one bit. The road was literally gone up there with like a massive sinkhole. up here. More damage. Today I'm heading up to the Press Isle area. 
wonder what else we'll find for damage on the way. I didn't expect that. Look at all this deterioration here. More of it. Who knows, the state may have literally ran out of cones, because there's very little markings around these things. They may have ran out. I don't know how widespread this is. Probably very widespread. I was just surprised that they didn't even put caution tape across that. The road was just wide open. Who knows who could come by there in the middle of the night and not see that. I was a little afraid backing up because that was a tight spot I was driving on with the pavement gone on each side with big drops and who knows how hollow that is under there. Sinkholes are way more dangerous on a paved road because the pavement holds itself for a while until you drive over it. At least dirt roads, they have not much to give, you know? This is all destroyed. Look at that pile of pavement. You know, a lot of culverts are actually undersized to save money or towns just can't afford it. And that's what causes things like this when you get a big rainstorm. Even if they weren't plugged, they become plugged so easily by debris in the current. You've got a flash flood, it'll plug the pipe instantly, go right over it. This whole area smells like pot. The car is sucking it in pretty well. At least Maine doesn't do that uh, BS that New Hampshire does, where they have like feet of gravel on the edge of the road. I don't, I'll never understand that. Even talking to the DOT, they say it's so cars have a little spot to pull over on. Well, why don't you just pave it a little bit wider since you've got so much infrastructure money, you're replacing bridges and roads that don't even really need it, you know? They're trying to use up that budget. Why not just make the road a little wider? or put down big gravel instead of sand and small gravel, which washes away the whole road when it rains hard. At least here, they got the grass right against it, so it's harder to wash out. This, this part of the road here got taken out a couple years ago. It's all brand new, didn't happen again. I love the rain. I love driving it. This is 4th of July weekend and the weather is keeping most people away. I hate that traffic. You know, yesterday was Saturday. It was super sunny, really warm. The traffic was very dense. This keeps people away. And every single day for the foreseeable forecast, rain. Love it. Can't imagine what the wilderness roads are going to be like today. I think I'm going to probably go through maybe every single roll of marking tape I got. I plan on it. First area I'm gonna check out is the area I'm friendly with, with that guy who owns the logging company. First area I'll prioritize, then I'm gonna go all over the place. His area, we can do that in a couple hours if the roads are in good shape. Just because someone owns over 20,000 acres, that's not many roads, that, you know? It's limited the actual roads it takes to go through that. I don't think we're gonna see much more damage. There's not many more big hills where flash floods can happen pretty easily. I'll keep the camera going a little longer though. Maine, or maybe tomorrow, I don't even think I'll get to that area. And I hope the roads are passable 
and I can even get to my trail cameras. I was, didn't intend on leaving them this long, but things got in the way. I have a couple trail cameras that are time lapsing, taking two video clips every single day on a timer because I want to make a time lapse video of an area going from empty trees going to summer. I put it on a tamarack forest. You know, tamarack is the only t kind of pine tree around here, at least, that loses its needles. It's not an evergreen, and I want to show them filling in. I'm hoping that came out, and I'm hoping no one stole it, because that was in a pretty obvious area. Then I got another one in the woods. I put a bunch of grapes and other junk food that was starting to rot I wasn't going to eat. Put it in front of that camera. Unfortunately, that one does not record sound, but I put one of my high-quality cameras in a moose swamp. We'll maybe get something on that. I've been out here a while. I got enough trail cameras now. I invested in a lot more of them. So I want to put a bunch of trail cameras up before winter and I want to time lapse the entire main wilderness for the winter. There was some places that had almost five feet of snow this year on the ground at once. So you gotta make sure that trail camera is in a very high place. Not where I would typically put it it'll get buried. Maybe not under a tree. Probably not as easily. I'm not seeing any more damage around this area. Well, no, probably just road work. What's this coming up? bridge for the past two years or so. I think we got to drive across a temporary one right now. Yeah, I think we do. This is something I do. I don't know if it actually helps, but I was taught when I am going to be stopped more than a few seconds just to put the car in neutral. Supposedly it saves the transmission. I've done that for years. My old car has over well over 300,000 miles and Transmission doesn't have a single issue Everything's original I was taught that a while back Because when you're just sitting there idling it's shaking and that is wear and tear You can take a little bit of it off I'm just clicking back and forth in the neutral. I usually just keep my hand on the shifter until I'm ready to pull off. Because I've made a mistake of forgetting I'm out of gear. These are temporary traffic lights. They don't have sensors. They don't know who's waiting. Even though the traffic's light, you just gotta wait for it to cycle. Most new traffic lights, they're green by the time you get there if you're the only one on the road, especially at night. It's all computerized. It sees you coming. Sensors and stuff. They have prioritizing systems. Depending on the time of day, it can change how long it stays on and that kind of stuff. It knows how many cars are waiting in a certain direction, and even if somebody was waiting longer than another spot, it can prioritize during rush hour and stuff. Usually works in your favor. Some of them are way better than others. just getting a car behind me now. Traffic's light. That guy doesn't know what a blinker is. Yep, we're going across the temporary bridge and they haven't even no, they're just, yeah, they're just still working on the foundation of the new bridge. Rain's picking up again. This is the rain. 
rainiest day in the forecast, but it's just a commute day, basically. field. This guy's corn is about the same size as mine I planted. Garden's doing pretty good. I'm just waiting a while. I'm not going to keep making updates every week. I'll show you guys after like a month. It's grown in so much. I'm about to check on that time-lapse camera and hope it's working. I have a time-lapse camera on the vegetable garden. Look at this tree, isn't this awesome how it's like a tunnel? It's perfectly square like that underneath, it's from big rigs driving under it. It can't grow down anymore. It just gets picked off leaf by leaf when the trucks go under it. gonna hear some beeping because I am I'm gonna I'm not driving in the rut anymore. I'm just not I think they put oil down or something with their construction. This road's very slippery. And it shouldn't be. I'm going only 45 and I was going in the rain earlier 70 and didn't feel anything.
That's a cool bus. Is that for sale? Yep, it is. Can't imagine how much it would cost though to maintain something like that. That thing probably gets like so old, like what, 4 mpg? Maybe 6? I've thought about over the years getting like a cheap school bus, making my own RV out of it. Those things are built really heavy duty. I would not want a full size one though. Good luck turning that around in a bad spot. And I also wouldn't want a mini bus, I'd want a short bus, you know? It's got the same engine as the big one, but it's like half the length if you know what I mean, but they are rare. But, the operation cost is what keeps me away from that. Diesel engines are expensive to work on. Rain is picking up again. This is basically a washout this whole day. how far they're paving or gonna pave. I'm also kind of surprised they build it. It must be in pretty bad shape. The northern New England states, you know what they've been doing lately? They don't even mill it. And I guess it doesn't matter if they don't roughen it up in some cases. They just put an oil slick over the top after sweeping it and they just keep adding layer upon layer. Some of these roads must be so thick you rarely see them tearing up. They just put a new layer over and over again. That's what I've been seeing. The road I live on has been repaved with a top layer twice since I've lived there in less than four years. This is very slippery. They had to have put something down. Very slippery road. That's why you keep hearing that beeping. It keeps trying to pull me and I'm also trying not to drive where the water is. yard who was all covered in rocks and debris from the drainage ditch overflowing. I wonder if insurance will cover that. That's a that's a gray area there, at least for my provider. I am incapable, at least for my insurance company, of getting flood insurance because they said it would have to affect a certain amount of your neighbors for you to even qualify for it, you know? the varying terrain and no one living near me, I don't think that happened, but they said if my basement ever flooded, it would be covered under sewer backup because it would only happen if the sump pumps failed from a power outage or something like that. Sucks. It's so slippery. 
some spots feel like you're kind of on ice. They did something here. I don't know what. I don't see an oil slick or anything. actually paints their roads well enough for the car to see the line. I've driven in certain spots, certain states, the, the roads are just so neglected, the car doesn't even know where the lines are. never this bad before they tore up the top layer.
road is already killing gas mileage. Getting way worse than normal. And no, four-wheel drive is not helping at all with this. Just gotta keep it slow for safety. road is messed up enough, certain areas are holding at least a half an inch of water right in the, where the tire is. Because from years and years of traffic, heavy trucks, especially in the summer months when the pavement is soft, kind of crushing it and molding it out of the way. I've seen some areas that are so bad, it literally holds almost half a foot, I'm not even joking. Specifically, the, there's an intersection in Springfield, Massachusetts on Page Boulevard, right near this oil, heating oil place. That's the worst spot I've ever seen in my life. I don't know why, but that one spot, so bad. The humps are so high from the tires displacing the pavement. If you're driving one of those sports cars, people that got like two inches, I don't know why you didn't want to do that, you're asking for trouble, they are going to hit that. guy there is building that garage himself or something right there. Every time I drive by it's got a little bit more added on it. Here's a real slow area that we're going into. No school in summer. Gotta go 15 here if that's flashing. What the heck? Was that manhole cover put on upside down? It looked like it. That last one. I didn't want to drive over that. I don't know if that thing's going to flip. was put on upside down because it had a little lip around the edge which is used for reinforcement on the underside. Look at that, a bunch of free books right there in the rain if you saw that. Oh wow, there was forever an abandoned train bridge I've been wanting to explore over to my left on the river here and not abandoned anymore they just made it into a bike trail in the past couple months got a brand new walkway across the top of the railings that's interesting wish I would have taken the time to explore it like a year ago but too late It's always
really sad that they have, they've tore down so many beautiful train bridges, you know, for the scrap value of it. It's an iron bridge. They're not going to get much, maybe 20 grand out of metal when it would cost so many millions to build that thing back again. So a lot of times when they made the mistake of removing it, the state, when they go to build a rail trail, they got to put another bridge in, which obviously they're not going to build it enough to hold a train, you know, just enough to maybe hold a maintenance truck going across. That's about it. But that still costs so many times more than the scrap value. But the ones that they left, and those are beautiful bridges, you know. If, if you're just walking or riding a bike or a snowmobile across it, that thing could be neglected for over a hundred years before it would even become dangerous to you. Look at some of the train bridges these days. They're from the 1800s. They haven't been painted once. It's the steel is just so thick. It takes hundreds of years to rust through and they can still even hold a giant train. They built things back then to last forever. New train bridges, they gotta replace them like every 50 years. It's stupid. Iron's cheap. At least we're on a road now, they're not working on it. It's no longer slippery. I don't know what they did to that last one. This is not slippery. At least, barely. I'm not feeling it. But it is raining heavy, so I'm not gonna go as fast as I usually would. I think I'm gonna end the video here. We've been talking for about 45 minutes. I don't think we're going to see any more damage. If I do, I'll make another video. Thanks for watching today's vlog of the damage and driving in the heavy rain and slipping a little bit on that other road. Not slipping at all here. You see there's no ponding in the road. It's all moving off to the side. This road doesn't have any issues. Guardrails here are all brand new, up to code. Driving through some nice farms. Beautiful rain, still 66 degrees, didn't budge. Love these days. I don't know how some people who live in the south can deal with that. I saw some forecasts the other day exceeding 115. I don't know. I, I, I hate it when it gets above 80. I don't know how you guys deal with that. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day.